Losing a loved one is always difficult, no matter what the circumstances, but for children, dealing with loss can be even harder. After her friend Deborah Hollenby, a mother of two young children, died, author Hilary Robinson was prompted to write a book for children about death. Now, is it difficult to deal with a, a subject that's taboo to a certain extent? Yeah, well, yes, up to a point. I did take a lot of advice. I wrote it originally about seven years ago um, because my sister-in-law, Caroline, had died from breast cancer. She'd been a teacher at Crosswell Infants in Morley. Um, but I just gave it to her husband and to her mother and put it in the file and didn't do anything more until much later. And then, of course, Deborah died just before Christmas, as you saw there and so on. But I sent out the text to bereavement experts and took on board the perceived wisdom as it is today, um, which is very much about talking about facts. I know Stuart there did a lot of work with uh, his children prior to Deborah's death. And, I mean, and looking through well. the book, it's very honest. It's about a teacher who literally, first of all, doesn't come to school one day and eventually they have to tell her whole school that she died. And obviously you mentioned they're your sister-in-law. What I wondered, and I was really shocked by these figures, how many children a year are affected by the loss of a parent? Of a parent? Well, 24,000 children in this country alone, that's one. That's a loss of a parent every 22 minutes. And, I mean, obviously that's between 0 and 18. It's quite a wide age group, but still, it's still a shock and it's a, a big thing to deal with. And that's just a parent. That's it's the immediate family, isn't That's it? right. It's not the extended family and friends and, and so on. So um, the teacher sort of encapsulated all of that because it was somebody that was close to the children, but it wasn't necessarily family and it wasn't a friend. It was somebody that sort of represented both in a sense. And uh, that's why that kind of worked really well. The, the Copper Tree, an interesting title. Well, that was inspired by St. Gemma's Hospice, who a few years ago um, built a tree of life mm. whereby leaves were inscribed, copper leaves were inscribed with the name of somebody that had died and, 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 and hung on there. Um, but in the copper tree, the children are um, encouraged to remember things about their teacher and what she shared with them and imparted and what they've learned from her and what they can then take forward. And the point of that being that, you know, death is not necessarily the end because other aspects can be everlasting and... Um, and so they do, they they sort of write their thoughts on remember notes and these are then transferred onto copper leaves and, and hang on a copper tree in reception. I know you take your messages very seriously. You've been an author for a long time. I hate to say it's a lovely book because it's a very sad subject. <coughs> it is an uplifting book, Hillary. Well, I mean, there are somebody, somebody rang me today, actually, um, a friend who also lost his daughter, and he said there's tears and there's laughter in that book. And, and that's the point, really. I think, you know, bereavement, you do smile. And you do cry. And so, you know, at the end of the day, it's a positive message as much as it can be in quite sad circumstances. Thank you very much.